Hello, Ben. <laughs> Hello, Carl. <laughs> Carl, I am your father. You know, my dad's name is also Carl. Is it? Is it really? Yeah. Carl Sr.? I am. I am. Uh, so here's the thing. For whatever reason, my parents were very against me being junior. So I am the second. Hmm. And I, I don't know if maybe there was like a bully in my parents' childhood named the junior or something, but they were like very much like, I'm not junior. Don't call me junior. Like, okay. Wow. I learned something cool. so deep I'm, about you today. <laughs> yeah. So I'm the second. Uh, and something deep about you that I want to share with the listeners is that before every episode, when we are getting the video and the audio synced together, we always do the little, you know, little slate clap to make sure that everything is able to be synced in post. Yeah. Where normally, like a normal person uh, doing that would say, three, two, one, and then you clap together. But no, not Ben. Ben <laughs> challenges my metronomic understanding of the time-space continuum and does the countdown at the slowest possible <laughs> speed ever. 40 BPM. And yeah, basically, because I this is you know a little bit a little uh, behind the curtain for the listeners, but I swear to you, it's always like okay, we'll clap on zero. You ready, Carl? Okay, three, two, one, and then we clap. Amazing. And that was as a, a drummer, that was barely as, exaggerated. Barely, yeah. I, I might have not. I probably should have stretched it out a little bit longer. Yeah. Um, but no, as as a drummer, like, of, of course, I'm going to try really hard to subdivide. Yeah. Oh, but, yeah, yeah, totally. I'm with that. But it's just, that. I, I shouldn't have. He's just making we could it just, we could just hard speed, on me. We should just speed it up. I'm so sorry. You know what? I, I oh, think he, it's like it's like a subconscious thing of like, oh, the latency on the internet must be bad. So I'll just do it slowly. And that's just kind of what uh, I've always done. That, 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 how, but explain your thought process because if the latency is making it slow, why would making it slower? I, it's not a good reason. Be better. It's just maybe like subconscious. That's what I did. You know, like it's not like it's not supposed to be. Yeah, it's not supposed to be real. It just is what it is. It's just like a some stupid habit I got in the in the habit of, and I'll stop doing it. <laughs> well, don't stop. It's part. It's part of. It's part of well, you. It's, it's part, part of your. Yeah, but it's a part, part of the of show that corpse. nobody has to know about anymore. And well, now they do because okay. I felt compelled to share my struggle, my pain as Carl the <laughs> Second. As Carl the Second. What's well, my mom's middle name? My mom's maiden name is my middle name. So. We all got weird things, you know? It wasn't junior by chance, was it? It was not junior, no. no. It was not junior. <laughs> Amazing. Well, hi, Ben. Hi, Carl. How are you? I am good. I'm in a, I'm in a weird mood. Okay, uh, great. Weird is weird. Which is, That's good. Which is good because we're, we're going to be talking about a weird, a topic. weird topic today. Yeah. yeah. Um, Do you want to tee it up? I've, yeah, I've been wanting to talk with you about artificial intelligence for a very, very long time. And... I think you and I are a uniquely suited couple mm. of humans to talk about this because we come from very different viewpoints on it, and also because we work in very different, you know, musical worlds. I think it's it has unique impacts to each of us and our future in this industry and our little you know neck of the woods uh, in the industry. So I, yeah, I've been wanting to talk about it for a long time. I use AI every single day and have for probably like a year and a half now, but I really want to open it up to you first. Oh boy. And see if you want to, if you wanted to just like dive into a specific little thing and expand on it, or if you wanted to start from a big picture and mm. start zooming in. I'll I'll start on like a big picture of like, why I guess maybe I'm a little bit skeptical. <laughs> maybe should we start there? Um, yeah, yeah. I'm not against AI also, it, like totally. I even like thought about like maybe we should do this as like a debate, like pro AI, anti AI. But I think we'll maybe we'll just we won't do that exactly. But I, I, I'm like a bit like looking at the big picture. I am like a bit afraid of where this all goes, and. I'm looking like way down the line, you know, like the, you know, what the really smart people are talking about, about like, you know, what's it called? AGI, um, where, where, where they actually know, figure out how to make their own decisions about all kinds of crazy stuff. Right now we're just in the, what's the LLMs I think it's called, right? L large language mm -hmm. models. But at, at yeah. some point the idea is that there'll be AI that can come up with ideas and perhaps they'll, you know, 
decide that humans are kind of in their way and let's just get rid of them. <laughs> kind of like, you know, Space Odyssey, 2001 Space Odyssey style. Um, so like in the long picture, long term, I think it's a bit scary. And I'm it's a very big power. And people that are much smarter than me, like Noah Yuval Harari, are talking about this, about how like, like we are wielding a new power that we just have no idea what the consequences are going to be like. And um, this could be even more dramatic than like, you know, the atom bomb or, you know, who knows what else, like who knows what the consequences of this are for humanity down the line. And so that's kind of what I'm afraid about. Um, in, in the short term with like music and stuff. So I think AI definitely is help. It's helping us make show notes for the show now and kind of like, it's, it's great for like, just like out today I went, went on chat GPT when we were looking, I was like try, trying to help uh, an artist with her lyrics and like, we're just like looking for some synonyms or rhymes or whatever. And it was just like really great to p pull up some words and, you know, gave us some quick inspiration. Um, uh, you, you know, you, you, you made me hip to Ozone 11, which I tried out and I was pleasantly surprised with. Um, so there's definitely good uses out of it right now. But there's also like a lot of danger. And I don't know if you listened to yet to Travis's uh, episode about AI because he had a did a you know from Progressions our co-sponsor we sp we sponsor each other, um, and he was talking about you know that there's this new I don't remember it was called Suma AI or something. Uh, uh, Sona. Sona Sona AI. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not as in into the field as you are. Um, and he and he was saying like like it was coming up with prompts for like music. And he's like, okay, I guess like we don't need lo-fi artists anymore. Like. And so there's a lot of jobs that I think are going to be in jeopardy. Um, I wouldn't say necessarily artists or mixers or, or mastering engineers yet, but definitely there's like f types of music that people make for, you know, backgrounds of commercials and films and stuff like, which is a pretty lucra lucrative industry for some specific artists that like when you don't need necessarily to have a hit song, it needs to just be good enough to be in the background of a movie. That could be really potentially bad for like, for artists, maybe maybe the flip side is that like, uh, okay, so now you could just focus on really making art as opposed to background music for a film, but this is people's you know you know incomes and and livelihoods and stuff. So I think it's it's dangerous and it's scary, and obviously we can't ignore it anymore. You know, so that's kind of my I don't know what that was, but that was my first uh, monologue about AI and my deep thoughts and whatever. <laughs> so. So, so are all of your thoughts fairly negative and uh, like worrisome? No, I mean, I told you I just used, I used ozone. I was pleasantly surprised. I'm using you know Chat GPT every once in a while with some you know modicum of success. I know there's better ones. Like I know you're hip to Claude, which I haven't used, and I'm not, I haven't used like any of the paid for AI stuff, which are probably better than the free uh, the free ones. Uh, Carl's eyes, people listening, Carl's eyes just went, mm, opened up wide. <laughs> My uh, eyes opened up so wide they grunted, apparently. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's, it's going to change things. It's ch already changing things. Uh, yeah, I, again, like maybe I'm more organic than you in my approach to things. And, and like, you're more like into pop and like, I don't know, things sounding mm. super synthesized sometimes. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that organic soul in me is, is, is less like gravitates towards it less. I'm, I'm more of an old soul than you, but, I think. Okay, but th that's where I want to fight you. Yeah. Because I look at it as AI enabling the exact same thing. The AI, like the way that uh, the way that I'm looking at it and the way that it's helped me and, and has affected my business and my art is that it's helped take a lot of the pressure off of me for the things that aren't creative and the things that aren't fulfilling to me and is and has opened up more time and energy and mental space for me to pursue the things that are inherently creative and to have the the the, the soul in it so for the same reason that you're you're saying that it, the, the the things that you say it might like take out of the process i'm saying it's enabling me to add more of it into the process right no i understand that um, yeah, I mean, I think that's what a lot of advocates for AI have been saying. So like, it's like, you just have to use it as another tool. It's just like another, like now we're recording digitally instead of on tape. Now we're using AI to help us generate random things rather than doing it all by ourselves. That's, would you agree with that? Yeah, totally. And, and I think that's why a lot of the, a lot of the first, you know, skills slash jobs, however you want to look at it, 
that are going to be replaced are things that are inherently not as creative in the first place, right? But you could even say that, I mean, in, in a way, I would even say that we're all very used to spell check and we don't look at that as, you know, rewriting our 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 narratives, rewriting our stories, right? Right. We also have like so, access to Wikipedia and we don't have to argue with people about re like, you know, facts that are just readily available, right? You know, on yeah, the internet, yeah, so, like if you remember the pre-internet days. Yeah, or we have Siri that we can ask. Oh, hold on, sorry. We have never say make that. Sure my phone ne doesn't go up. Yeah, well, my the uh, the Alexa's downstairs. So, yeah, like the uh, we have we have Alexa that if we have a question, if we're like making dinner and we have a question about oh, is like how many ounces is three tablespoons, or can my dog eat this? You know, we mm. have that at our fingertips. And we don't think anything of it, and it hasn't like, like yeah, I'm sure it puts some, I don't know, like recipe books out of business. You know what I mean? Like I, 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 I just have, I have simultaneously too little faith in humanity, and also too much faith in humanity. I have too little faith in humanity in thinking that all of the negative things that AI could bring upon us. I mean, I'll try to stay into like think as as a creative and try to stay within the scope of like right. music industry we're not going to talk about artificial general intelligence and, and yeah like i don't i don't want to get like i don't want to turn this into like a scary stuff yeah 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 um but uh, like all of the negative things that it can do it, it's done because a human prompted it to do it right and i think it's the decision making and the training that the humans are doing or are providing for it that are ultimately going to be the the issues um but all of the good things that it can do for us, and or, or sorry, so the, the the little too little faith I have in humanity is that humans are going to find a way to ruin it. You know, are going to find a way to ruin a lot of things that we take for granted right now. Like, uh, I think uh, editing. I mean, I'm sure you've seen this too. Like editing for podcasts, creating the show notes for podcasts, like the copywriting for that, um, doing audio cleanup, even for for dialogue, for yeah. Uh, for music, um, there's a lot of things that it is going to be to to be re replacing. But I think also the reason I have a lot of faith in humanity is that we've come across things that have really, especially in the music industry, we've come across things that have really shaken up all of it, right? From recorded music to you know electric guitar amps to digital recording to streaming. To, you know, to, to all of these things, like we've found ways to take the new tools that we get and really find a way to use them in new creative ways. And the people that are able to take those new tools and do something really unique with it, those are the ones that are really like, you know, that, that continue to, to, to make waves and push the envelope forward. And I look at it as a challenge, not as a, not as like a purely an obstacle in what I do, but more of a challenge to myself of how can I use these things in a way that's actually meaningful and helps me to create better art and helps me to make more meaningful relationships with people and it'll enable me to free up more soul to put into the music because I'm, I'm my soul's not being crushed by all of the editing and sifting through, you know, sifting through an hour long podcast episode to try to find that, you know, 45 seconds of a golden nugget that I want to share because I think it's going to help to move people. Right. Yeah. As I was so thinking I, about the, the, the new Beatles song that came out a couple months ago, or maybe mm -hmm. four months. How long ago was that? I don't remember. It was a while ago. Yeah. Yeah. Might have been. Yeah. It might have been six months ago. Uh, and, and they used the AI to, to clean up John's voice and remove it from the piano. And they were able to kind of like do this whole, this whole thing. And, and they, they the, the reason why they felt like they could do that was because John Lennon was always like so forward thinking about technology. He's like, always jumping on the next recording technology and they felt like that knowing that about his personality made them feel like he would be okay with them do, using AI to kind of like clean up his voice and and do this whole new production including old recordings and new recordings and and in between recordings from the 90s uh from the anthology era um and they were able to make that song which you know it's actually I'm I'm happy that song got released because even though it's not like the best John Lennon song and it's not the Beatles, best Beatles song it still has like a certain 
Yeah. I mean, that song was special for a bunch of reasons. Like, I don't know. It was like the end of the Beatles, which for me was emotional. Like, oh, this is actually yeah. it, you know, as like a big Beatles fan. But, um, but yeah, but I'm glad it went out into the world, you know? So like, it's pretty, it is, that is pretty cool. And to, and to know that John had that forward thinking mindset. And I, I do think that's healthy. On the other hand, like I do see today, like, like streaming, while it democratizes accessibility to music, right? Artists are not getting paid the same amount as they used to. And the other thing that I've always had a problem with with streaming is once everything is available to you, you're you're just not as you're not as possessive of the music that you listen to. Like when you were a kid and you bought a CD, like that was your music, you know. Like you you bought that, you know, whatever it was. You know, for me, like, let's say the the Black Album by Metallica in eighth grade, you know what I mean? Like, that was my record, you know? Um, and and now it's like, oh, I'll listen to that, and then I'll listen to that, and then, I, and like, none of the artists, you know what I mean? Like, stick around in that meaningful sort of serious way like it used to for me. But may, maybe that's because uh, I'm old or I'm just an old soul or just who I am as a person, you know? I don't know. What do you, I well, mean? Well, I, I think... I mean, this is not about AI, it's, but it's just about, like... yeah. Like things, sure, things are are moving on, and there's good aspects to it for sure, 100 percent good aspects to it. But it not, doesn't necessarily mean that everything is qualitatively better, you know? Yeah, I mean, I will say that there's a lot of sub. Uh, I, I I don't want to downplay your emotional connection to like the Black Album, for example, or having like physical CDs in the first place. And I'm I'm 38, going to be 39 very soon, and like I have a very similar experiences growing up like i remember like downward spiral was one that i just i remember having that and just being so protective of that physical cd it was crazy but that's nostalgic for me in the same way that my nintendo 64 is nostalgic for me and like yeah i could play you know a rom of that game on a computer but it wouldn't be the same but it's not the same tactile experience that i had as a kid right because it's not it's 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 the experience that i had that is making me nostalgic not the actual thing itself and i feel like th throughout the ages different generations just develop those experiences right with different things and there i'm sure there are there are people even people listening to this now they're younger generation that you know, they had that same sort of uh, experience with Spotify. an iPod, even with yeah. Spotify, yeah. you know, with Bandcamp, with Bandcamp Fridays, you know, might, might be something that that jumps out to them. Yeah. You know, so I, I, I. Right. We are a product of our generation. Yeah. And I think we are, you know, as, you know, late millennial. aging millennials. Yeah. Early, late millennials. I early, think, early millennials, well, actually. I think, I think we're early. early. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but my lower back is saying definitely aging. <laughs> Um, but I think, you know, this is maybe one of the times of reckoning where we have to realize, oh, yeah, we're like the older generation now. And I think we have – that's why we're so like, oh, I, I love vinyl or I love, you know, yeah. getting physical CDs or all, whatever the resurgence is. Yeah. I know. It's it's crazy to me that some – like yeah. I, I had a client in high, from who was like in high school – this was a couple of years ago. And I was like closer in age to her mom than her. I was like, this is weird. <laughs> like this is just weird. <laughs> But anyways, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so I think it, it comes down to, you know, the experience that you're building the, the experience you're having when you're building that nostalgic connection. Yeah. And I, I don't think it's CDs themselves that did it or vinyl themselves that did it. It's the experience that you have and whatever that, yeah, whatever that may may be. Sure. Okay. And it's, it's, if anything, if anything, you could argue that maybe it's better that younger generations are not making as many uh, nostalgic connections to material items. I'll just put that out there. I'm not, I'm not going to make that argument. I'm just going to say there's like on an environmental level, environmental level, or just like uh, from like a capitalism level. I don't know. That could, that could go into like a whole offshoot conversation, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, maybe people do like their physical items though. They do. Uh, wait, so 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 give me some uh, good examples of like you using AI in a not uh, creative way that helps you do more creatively. Um, okay, so I have, I'm fairly certain I have undiagnosed ADHD, right? And if you've ever talked to me, 
that should probably not be any surprise whatsoever. Uh, if you listen to this podcast, <laughs> that should probably not be a surprise. At all. I'm not. I'm not um, sure, man. But I'm also not sure if I have it or not. You know, like who knows? Well, so for me, one of the things that I really love using it for is it enables me to just pull up my phone, just use the voice memo app on my phone, and I'll just like word vomit whatever is bouncing around my head. And especially as a freelance, you know, mixing engineer, you know, studio owner, there's a lot of things constantly bouncing around my head and things that I don't want to forget, things I want to, you know, elaborate on at some point, things, people I want to reach out to, people I want to follow up with, uh, ideas for the business that I have. And what I can do is I just pull up my phone, pull up the voice memo app, and I just word vomit for, you know, five minutes straight while I'm out walking the dog. I airdrop it to my computer, drop it into Descript to get the transcription. I can take that transcription over to Claude and ask Claude to, you know, I, I just say, hey, I recorded a some uh uh like well what do you what do you call those things when you not not spur of the moment, not brain dump thought. A brain dump. Yeah, I, I just say um, I recorded a brain dump of some ideas that I have for my studio business. Uh, I would like for you to, you know, arrange them as bullet points and uh, categorize them by topic. You know, I'll, I'll write a slightly more specific and useful prompt, but just for easy ease of explanation, that's what I would do. Sure. And it'll go through. Um, I'll also tell it that uh, the transcription is was a auto-generated so there may be some confusing grammar choices or typos so infer meaning from the rest of the context to, to infer what i'm talking, talking about. about and it'll give me a whole like to do list, list for the day like a to-do list or like a, a you know organized key topic so it's a way for me to take my crazy you know creative weirdo way too many ideas scatterbrain and actually put it into something that's organized and i can attack it mm. you know so so that's one way that it really helps me because that's not necessarily helping me with a a task in the traditional sense but it enables me to free up that mental space that i constantly am i always have filled with all of the ideas that i have going on all the people i need to reach out to all of those things and right, i'm sure right, right, right. there's at least a few people listening to this that know what i'm I, I know what you're talking about. That. Yeah, I've I, brain dump is definitely a good way to do it. But yeah, I guess yeah. this is a, a quicker way, a faster way, a less thought out. <laughs> yeah, not, and, not thought and out, think, but it's but it's smart it, and it works for I, you. I think it for me. It, if it also works for me because I can do it while I'm walking the dog, so I feel like I'm, you know, I'm multitasking, uh, getting some <laughs> not, fresh not, air. I, as a, I, I am a terrible multitasker. I don't know about you, but. <laughs> yeah, generally, yeah. yeah. But also, um, I think there's something nice for me. I usually think faster than I can write or think faster than I can type. And I speak faster than I could probably <laughs> uh, write as well. And that enables me to not get slowed down by my own hand. Right. Or the, my own, the, you know, the, my, my the own mechanical writing. actual thing of writing. Yeah. So even if it's even if it's only saving me a few minutes by doing that that's not really the point it's not necessarily purely a time efficiency thing it's a it, it's removing all of the potential obstacles of me fully letting all of the wild ideas out of my brain so that way i can you know focus on just getting done with the few really really important things when i get back from that walk yeah what what about like ai use in actual songwriting in actual uh production have you dabbled with that at all? Is there do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, I've uh I have not used it for like I haven't used it for generative music yet. Um I just haven't found any that are useful for what I want to do. I have some ideas of things that I'm looking forward to being useful, but really worth worked for me musically. I know we've talked about using uh, the AI like master assistant function in the new ozone. Um, again, not as a 
click a button and then it's done. So send it to the client and charge the money kind of a situation, but more as a way to inform myself about some of the things that I've decided to do in the mix. So that way I can see if I'm missing anything that I right. didn't do on purpose, or I can confirm that, you know, maybe I am doing things that are intentionally left of center because I want to, and it's noticing it and I'm cool confirming with it. that I, I I'm cool with it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I know we also talked about how, when I, would be getting very similar sorts of recommendations from the AI as far as like my low end or, you know, the transients in the mix. When I start to get that same, you know, getting very similar information back and feedback from it across multiple songs, across multiple genres, then I start to realize, oh, there are some tendencies that I have that are maybe working against me. Like I have too much sub in my kick drums, just as a general thing. That's something that I've found that I used to do. I was, as soon as I became more conscious of that through the combination of friend of the show, Nicholas DiLorenzo, um, giving me feedback before mastering and also with the AI, um, it helped me to become a better mixer because it made me more conscious of some of my tendencies. Yeah. So there's, there's that also I've used it before with clients that, uh, we were treating, this is before I switched to Claude and I was using chat GPT for, I think, um, and we were using chat GPT as a co-writer essentially, because we had, you know, 85% of a song written and finished, but the second verse, he was struggling to find something that made it's sense. It's always the worked. second verse, isn't it? It's always the second verse. Yep. Maybe it's the bridge. Um, but I feel like <laughs> pop songs now. Or both in today's, yeah. today's example of me using chat GPT. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was gonna say, like, I mean, in, in pop music, I feel like there's even fewer and fewer bridges. Uh, I am, but I'm pro having, bridge, by the way. <laughs> I'm I'm pro bridge in general. I'm just I'm I'm pro short and sweet bridge. I think. Um, but what we were using it for was to help us to get a second verse. And what we did was we fed it. I think the probably four or five verses that he tried and wasn't happy with. In addition to giving it the context of everything else in the song and the general emotion that we were trying to achieve for the song and the emotion we were trying to achieve in the second verse specifically. So we were giving it all this context that we had and it gave us a bunch of options. Were any of them amazing? No. But sometimes just that new perspective would right. shift the way that we were approaching it. Right. And it's it was just like having another co-writer in the room. Like it's... It wasn't mm. writing for us. It wasn't creating, you know, yeah, magic I, out of thin air. Yeah, I could, I dig that. Like, I feel like if if you had said like, oh, we actually just used exactly what ChatGPT wrote, then I would be like, so is that still like a human artistic expression or not? But but it, but no, it 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 gave you that object ob objectivity to kind of make something better. And that, I mean, that's what happened to me today with chat gpt like we got like a we got like a synonym that like enabled us to find a different kind of word that that sounded good with a half of it or whatever and the, like that that was dope i guess i could have just used a synonym thing but i tried tried it with chat gpt um yeah but but yeah as long as it's like facilitating your creativity as opposed to doing it instead of i don't know <laughs> i guess i guess i would ask you like what you think about like generating music with these a potentially in the future, these AI kind of music generators, at what point does it still count as like, you know, music production by a human? Because I'm also like a sucker for human interaction and like, you know, e even musicians in a room interacting with another with one another. And I really do think that there's something magical there that does happen versus like completely stuff that's gridded and whatever. Um, uh, so, so I'm like, I'm very pro human when it comes to like music playing production, all that stuff. But so this is kind of like, again, old school Ben I, ideas and thoughts, but, but what, what, in terms of like generating music via AI, like at what point does it cross the line of like, this isn't cool anymore, you know? <laughs> well, I think that for me, I think that point would be when the decision to use that as a final product is based purely on ease, as opposed to hmm. deciding whether or not it's actually connecting emotionally with the intent. But I, 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 I want to push you further. I have, I have a bit of a hypothetical question for you then. Okay. So you're all about, you know, bands in the room playing and getting the performance. What if I gave you 
two songs, one of which was written by an an AI, right? And you were tasked with, you know, like here here's a demo of it. I, I don't want you to play like the real bass part. I want you to to go off of this. Versus, you know, there was a singer songwriter that wrote a song, made a demo, and wanted you to, you know, play real bass on it. Versus a cover song of someone that you didn't know it was a cover, like you'd never heard the song before. And you don't know which one's which. Does the song that was written by AI but performed by you, is that inherently does that inherently make your performance less human? Well, that, not the performance of the bass, but the song itself, sure. You know, I don't I don't know. But isn't so much of the song in the performance and the interpretation? Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. Like, I have no idea. It's purely, purely like a rhetorical, like... I don't have an answer you know. for this. I, uh, yeah. I, 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 f I feel uncomfortable with songs that are written by AI fully or like f mostly. And then I feel uncomfortable with songs that would be performed by uh, AI fully or mostly. I feel like... At a certain point, you have to have a human touching some things and being part of the, you know, at least driving the ship, you know, at the, at the very least. But I, I, I'm afraid there's going to come a time where we're not going to know the difference because it's gotten so good. And then it just, that just seems like fake, you know, I don't know. It feels like, like, I, I don't know. I, my, my imagination of the future is like now, now that Apple has come out with those like ProVision, whatever they're called you know headsets and stuff and it's like it's like spatial audio and and uh and you know and and we're all in these vr heads headsets and we're just like listening to music that was created by machines it just seems very much like uh uh what was that wally -E movie <laughs> you know like like and that seems quite dystopian to me as opposed to like in the 70s when you know fleetwood mac would re release a song and like they did every single part and you know it sounded amazing you know <laughs> I, I, I don't know i feel like uh just uh, just uh, as a comparison, like I feel there's yeah, something just dystopian about potentially what 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 may happen in the in the not so long future from now, not not too distant future. So I can see what you're saying, but the reason I don't think that'll ever become a reality is not because the technology won't be there, but I think because people won't make money from it. And I what I mean is I feel like the more that it, the more that the music becomes easier to generate the more likely the shift is going to be that fans and like the, the audiences are more interested in the people and the music is an extension of that. And music is part of that person's expression, but they're in it for the, the people, not just the song itself. I hope you're right. And when, Although I'm not sure you're I, right. Cause I, 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 I would argue I think that people the, are already trying to industry, make money off of like, AI stuff like I feel like there's like there's like Spotify bots and stuff like that happening already no yeah but I think it's not really like actually I don't think it's sustainable or sustainable. I feel like but if, I would say if I, people could figure out a way to make money off of something with less work they try to do that right yes so don't you but think, I don't think don't you think that's gonna happen I think some people do but I don't think the buyers are gonna I, I don't think the audiences are going to just become like Wally -E, and just be like, okay, thanks, computer. I feel like there there are too many people like you and I that want to know the story behind a song. They want to they want to like the the reason that I think we are drawn to the physical CDs that is like we want more than just the sonic experience. We also want to like there's their visuals in it. There's uh, knowing the people that are involved in it, like having that sense of like lore in a way and the reason that i feel like it's going to keep on going in that direction is because i feel like that's exactly what social media has done already it has made for, for better or worse and i'm sure people are gonna can argue for both sides but it has made it made music part of the artist's story an extension of the artist but an artist is now like people follow artists they don't follow songs right and they the people that tend to have a, a lasting impact on listeners are the ones that are 
unique and authentically themselves. There are people that will go viral and have a big hit and make more money in, in the short term, but they're not making as much of a an impact on society. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and especially on on the industry and on other musicians. Right, right. The, tic- so I'm the not TikTok, about- like songs that blow up, they tend to like disappear pretty quickly from what I understand. Exactly, exactly. You know, and, but I think the same reason why people were drawn to Led Zeppelin was there was a, a mystery to it. It was, the sure. music was, the, I mean, people loved the music, but they liked the, everything about them. The, the whole the whole story right yeah. same thing with the beatles yeah, I mean, like, we always there's... wanted we're always like hunting down like interviews with our favorite artists like what does this person actually think what do they really like you know like yeah if, and I think if like beatles tom are... york is like on an interview yeah. like you better believe i'm going to be listening to that interview you know as soon as yeah. i can you know but my, my point back to when you're talking about the beatles the new beatles song too like if you were saying like it wasn't like you know the best john lennon song ever but like if there's that, such if, a story there yeah and there's such a story there, and yeah. that's why people care. That's why they made a documentary about it. That's why they put so much time and effort and money and blood and sweat and tears into making it because the whole world is invested in the, the Beatles as a whole, not invested in that song, right? So Yeah. I do think I that think, social media does take away from some of the lore because when everything is exposed all the time— you lose some of that sort of like, ooh, what's happening here? You know, the curiosity. I do, and I, I do think that there's that, oh, whatever, this is like, maybe this is a different conversation, a different podcast episode of like social media, right? But like, I, I do think that social media has, has, has shifted the focus away from the art to some degree. Like, it's more, more about the artist, right? And what they have to say about other things also, maybe not even about music. And uh, I do think that, and and for some artists, it's so overwhelming to deal with also having to do the social media presence and make the music, whereas it used to be, I mean, this is like, uh, you know, obviously now everyone can make music and it's more democratized. So that's a, that, that is an upside. On the other hand, those that are trying to make a living in music, they have to do a trillion things to make it work. So then back to the topic of AI, AI. <laughs> wouldn't you argue that all of the t- all of the AI tools that are going to help those artists to get those other things off their plate so they can just focus on creating isn't that a good thing? Yeah, but then we're it's like a vicious cycle because then we're back to like just mm-hmm. following AI algorithms and <laughs> in our in our spacesuits and and uh, <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> that may be jumping a like few everything steps ahead, is like but, yeah. every, like the internet in five years from now like I feel like everything is fake we don't know what's real it's deep there's deep fakes there's like you could generate anybody's voice anybody's visual like what the what is real anymore you know what I mean like that is how I'm envisioning five years from now on the internet or even less it's just like I just don't know what's real anymore you know okay. Now, first off, I'm getting into I'm getting into kooky, am, kooky territory, but well, I'm, I don't know. This is just where I my brain, say is, that this I, is, where my brain have, is going. Yeah, well, I I want to say to be clear, I have I have very mixed feelings about AI and the the good and the bad of it. I am just if for the purpose and of this I, and, conversation, and I, and I agree with most of the things you are saying in terms of like it helping people do the more creative. I I'm with you. Yeah, I think we agree I, I on most s- of this. I'm just my I, yeah. old soul is pushing back against your new soul. Yeah, and I think I just wanted to to make sure make it clear that like we are trying, we are actively trying to kind of like weigh the good and the bad, right? Not just saying we don't want to be a doom and gloom podcast where we're just like, oh, the whole world's going to shit. But we also don't want to <laughs> pretend that there's nothing bad happening, right? So I I just I, and I think generally speaking, your that's you been the story of my life. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, but you you lean more naturally towards the skeptical side. I lean a little, little bit more toward the futurist, like hopeful side. Um, and I think God we are actively trying. <laughs> but I think, thanks. But I think we're trying to like kind of actively like turn each o- turn ourselves up to eleven to try to like cover more more ground in this. Yeah. So, so I wanted I wanted to say that as a preface as a blah 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 preface a preface a preface. I wanted to say that as a preface. To a point that I have now forgotten. Okay. You can take a second. But what was the last thing that you said, though? About, like, everything's going to be fake in the future. Oh, okay, yes. So to, to go back to your point, I wanted to make that – I wanted to say that as a preface to my point that people were probably saying the same thing once the internet started getting more easily accessible when – 
digital, I mean, even probably even when Photoshop was first the thing, right? right? When digitally recorded music was first a thing, when autotune was first a thing. So this is not the first time in human history that we've been up against something where we're like, well, if it continues, we're, you know, how are we going to know what's real and what's not? And I think as the technology develops, so too does our ability to still have that that gut feeling, that sixth sense about right. what's real and what's not. Or also, like, even if it sounds really great, but it doesn't connect emotionally, it doesn't matter how great it sounds. Yeah. You know, well, just same, same thing. To, to my, 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 my pushback on that point is like, I don't know if you watched the video I, sh I shared with you uh, of you, you mm -hmm. Noah Harari. He's saying like for the first time in history, we don't know what 20 years is going to look like at all. We have zero idea yeah. and we have no idea how good AI is going to get. And uh, probably is going to get very, very good. So I think we, we, we just need to be like, I mean, there's nothing we can do about it. Right. <laughs> we could, we're just podcast host, hosts, but, but like, I do feel like we just don't really know this time, you know? Yeah. But I think what we can do, and maybe this is a good place to kind of try to wrap this one up. Sure. Is that our the, the best thing that we can do is to try to stay up to date on what's happening and try to understand it, even if we don't use it, even if we don't love it, even if we don't, you know, even if we don't have strong opinions right. on it Make yet. a conscious choice not to use it as opposed to a conscious choice to use it. Well, I guess my, my point is <laughs> either way, regardless of whether or not we want to use it, regardless of whether or not we think it's a good thing or a mm -hmm. bad thing, it's going to happen. And any, uh, any information and any understanding and perspective that we can develop for ourselves is going to help us to be able to adapt and navigate the whatever craziness comes at us in the future. So... I think putting your heads in the sand is not a good way to handle it. I'm not saying that's, that's not what you're getting at at all. No, I'm no. just saying like, as opposed to like a, a, a lot of people will feel the instinctive like call to just say, that's ah, bad for humanity. And then they just kind of hope that it goes away. You know, they hope they hope it goes away. And I think instead they're the benefits of trying to keep up with it, trying to understand it. So that way we understand, you know, if there are, times and places that we can have a voice in how legislation is made. We can develop our sense of being able to spot it. You know, we can, in the same way that, you know, our generation is a lot less likely to get, you know, spam or get uh, scammed than like our parents' generation, for example, because we grew up learning social media. We grew up learning the internet. We grew up becoming more attuned to that and being able to spot it a lot yeah. more quickly. Yeah. And I think if we shut ourselves off now at, you know, in our thirties and our forties, I think that's setting us up for that same sort of, uh, future issue where we, we don't know how to tell. We don't know when it's fake. We don't know when it's right. We don't know what's good. We don't know what's bad. We don't know what's real. We don't know what's fake. Yeah. And I think just regardless of whether you like it or not, it's going to be coming. And I think we need to at least be aware yeah. of the changes. I'm with so you. So we can try I to do something that. when we can. I, I, uh, yeah. Stay informed, stay updated, try things out, see how it goes, you know. Eat yeah. your vegetables. Eat your, yeah, totally eat your <laughs> vegetables. Try to get some protein in there too, if you can. And uh, yeah, I think uh, so. Just to put a ribbon on this episode, AI is coming. It's scary, it's exciting at the same time. It's going to change the landscape of the music industry. It's going to change. It's going to get rid of some jobs. It's also going to get rid of a lot of menial tasks. And then who the going to create a lot of jobs too. <laughs> yeah. It'll, it'll get rid of jobs. It'll create new jobs. It'll, it's going to do a lot. It's going to do a lot of good, a lot of bad. And I think being open and aware of both the good and the bad is healthy, a healthy way to go. Amazing. Carl, this is great. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. <laughs> Thanks for letting me finally do an episode about AI. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> uh, I'm going to uh, switch to a very serious tone and say, bye, Ben. Bye, Carl. <laughs> the serious outro. Serious outro.